What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here and I'm back with another D&D Weekly Update. This time I'm covering two weeks because I didn't get to do it last week because of Gen Con. Um, speaking of conventions though, we have two to a couple even more than that major conventions coming up that Dungeons and Dragons is going to be at. We have Hascon, we have PAX West, um, there was also some new, obviously, Dragon Talks, but there was a couple of really good... Uh, rules discussions by Jeremy Crawford that came out of Gen Con, and most importantly, the D&D survey. If you like D&D 5th edition and you want to have any, feel like you have any impact or control over any of it, you need to go fill out this survey. If you want to see what that's all about, go ahead and stay tuned. All right, so why don't we jump back in. So, uh, two weeks ago, we saw there's a little post here about Dungeons & Dragons at Hascon. I feel like we may have already spoken about this, but there's a bunch of different options for D&D at Hascon. There's a two-hour welcome adventure, welcome to the life of adventure, just get you into Tomb of Annihilation. Um, create a first-level character or choose a pregen. There's a family-based adventure with kid-friendly characters and things like that. There is the D&D Experience, which is a five-hour adventure. You'll earn rewards uh, that can be used in future adventures, gain experience up uh, to level up your new character. Every player will see a, a copy of Tomb of Annihilation, the Dice Tin, and Dice, and an Ultra Pro D&D Character Folio, and a convention-exclusive Tomb of Annihilation Dice Bag. Um, starting with a new first level character or weekend warrior which is what I intend to do I am going to be at Hascon as uh, press coverage so I'm going to be going to a lot of different events both for magic and and D&D &D and GI Joe my little pony and all those different things but I'm going to attempt to get into this 10 hour one I may actually have access to it due to my badge so I can truly experience what D&D had to offer at this convention is two uh, five-hour slots, one five-hour slot on day one, and another five-hour slot on day two. You get basically everything we just talked about. However, you'll also get a special encounter run by uh, one of our uh, the celebrity DMs, which could be Mike Murrows, Chris Lindsay, Satine Phoenix, uh, Matt Mercer, all of those folks. And then, obviously, those are only while supplies last. There is uh, Danny Hartel is dressed up as a Batiri Goblin. You can get pictures with her. There is a monster-building panel on Saturday, uh, where they're going to go through and design a new monster. There's also a couple of joint panels between D&D and Magic the Gathering uh, about creating fantasy worlds and things like that. And there is the My Little Pony exclusive Dice Tin, which obviously I will be picking up. I don't know if they're going to... Um, a full set of 10 sparkly pink dice inspired by Pinkie Pie. Uh, there's 46, so it's a 10 die set with 46. Beautiful metal container with the D&D My Little Pony group. Um, we'll have all sorts of D&D happening at Hascon. Um, get your tickets now. Don't worry. Um, I'm wondering to see how many I'll be able to get because I'm hoping to grab some extras, but we shall see. Back on the 15th, so that was lat not this Tuesday, but the previous Tuesday, the full-blown D&D um, Beyond launched, so we can see a little bit more of that here. Uh, and then you can go in and pick up the digital tool sets and buy if you want to buy extra stuff. And then there's a character building process here with Mike Merles in this video. Uh, again, two weeks ago, Nathan Stewart. Actually, this was this past week. I just got him out of order, I think. But Nathan Stewart was on Dragon Talk Podcast talking about filming uh, of the Force Grey Lost City of Omu series. And the lore you should know in this one is all about Volo. Um, so that's a Volo of Volo's Guide. Uh, Podcasts of Annihilation came out uh, two weeks ago as well. Um, this was, we saw the stream of Annihilation earlier where they put together a bunch of streamers of D&D, &D, although a lot of them were, I feel like, sort of in-house in that Dice Camera Action was one of them. Um, they obviously didn't have Critical Role stream, but they had a lot of in-house streams, although they did grab from some other people. Uh, some people that I think weren't very well known, um, some that clearly were, uh, but I felt like that didn't really seem like an outreach program and more like they picked who they want. Uh, this stream of our podcast of Annihilation is grabbing some of the most popular podcasts out there, and they are all doing various uh, Tomb of Annihilation based adventures and then crossovers and things like that. And you can see when they are launching. And there are 10 different folks. So we have Nerd Poker, so this is Brian Posehn's group. Some of these you may recognize as well Talking Initiative, Turn Cloaks, 
um, is a D&D podcast from Encounter Roleplay. Uh, we've talked about them a bunch here on the channel. God's Fall. Uh, Sneak Attack is another really popular one. Drunks and Dragons. Uh, my personal friends here, the Venture Maidens. D&D is for nerds. Dungeon Drunks. And you meet in a tavern. Again, some of these, if you're familiar with D&D or the D&D podcast scene, a lot of those names will sound familiar to you. So that's super cool. This was the one from two weeks ago that Holly Conrad was on. So Commander Holly, a.k.a. Strix from Dice Camera Action, was on Dragon Talk to talk about just that. And then there was a lore you should know as well um, about Halrua, which, uh, that's a nation. Okay, so I knew I knew it from somewhere, but I couldn't remember where. Um, so that happened. Then, first of all, I want to point out, can we talk about the Acquisitions Incorporated website? How this is like straight out of the 90s and like there's the AI symbol as like Clippy. So this is the full-on Acquisitions Incorporated website. As you can see here, there's the gift shop stuff. There's the C team, which is the current streaming on Hyper RPG. But you can like look at the, even the images are all pixelated like an old school website. I love it. Um, you can click here and go to the company and see everybody here. Obviously, Omen put it together, so he's all sparkly. Um, but if you go down here, you can see all the different people. And then the bottom, you can see made by Omen Dran. Uh, the total of visitors. Curious if we click, do we see? Jim Dark Magic, Omen, Fiari, Morgane, Binwin. I don't even know who this is. Oh, this is well, Will Wheaton. Got it. Strix, and then again, here's all the C Team characters. But why would you say Strix? Well, because there is a new podcast. A three-hour podcast? Uh, no, two-and-a-half-hour podcast, I guess, called Enter the Trash Witch, which is basically the continuation of the PAX East adventure earlier this year and what happens with uh, the rest of the characters there. And then basically they're going to pick up... I haven't listened to it. You can see I've only made it three minutes in. But they're going to pick up Strix from dice camera action and she's going to be added and the reason why is that she's going to be at pax west so that the pax west uh acquisitions in corp is going to be strix fiari omen and jim dark magic uh i talked a little bit about this at the start uh jeremy crawford um i didn't even realize this like this is the this is the adventure league room i was actually sitting at this exact table uh but probably earlier than when this happened uh playing adventure league at gen con apparently like D, D folks were just there like running games and walking around um but he basically this is like a nine nine insider hacks for D, &D players and dms i'm not going to go through every single one i'll just touch on the, the basically the high bullet points here but it's super useful information for veteran and new dms alike in that it gives you like things that you should do. I mean, even if you're uh, in general or if you're running a pre-written adventure, I don't know why this is so far off to the side and my camera, and you know, we're gonna move me over here now so we can read everything as we go. Rejigger your ability rolls to fit what your character is good at. Um, this is a rule, I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but basically there is an, a variant rule in the player's handbook right out there that I think a lot of people overlook that you can use any ability score to do any skill check as long as it makes sense. Like this one is talking about persuasion. If you're trying to to woo somebody through use of uh, you know your your force of personality, then yeah, okay, a charisma. That's also why anytime you look at any checks in the book, it says you 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 make you could make a charisma persuasion check or advantage on charisma persuasion checks. The reason they call out the stat ahead of time, it, rather than just say a persuasion check, is because you can make dexterity persuasion checks or intelligent persuasion checks. Um, the example he gives here is that you're trying to win somebody over by showing off and doing an acrobatic routine, and that would be a dexterity persuasion check. Super useful rule, not a lot of people are aware of it. Um, Get better technology. Again, you can do use digital tool sets to help you out. Uh, possibly even die rollers. Weed out problem players. This is a big one um, that I agree on, especially for those of us who do streams, whether they're in person or, or recorded videos or anything. I mean, it also works 100% at the table. Uh, but 
basically you don't want to lock somebody into your game and then find out two episodes in especially if you're doing the recording kind of thing that nobody likes them they great they great you you great them they don't get along well with the rest of your players so basically do a, a couple of one shots or a mini arc and a trial period to feel out how everybody feels about one another and then go from there um the fact that you can use the dodge action if you don't know what you're doing so that creatures get disadvantage on attack rolls this one was interesting stop rolling initiative for monsters uh just use 10 plus their dex mod um use backgrounds more for flavor rather than as a hard fast rule um try to shut down the evil players unless they think they can really roll with the campaign and not ruin it for everybody else and then um avoid dm burnout by cutting down your preparation time so we talked about DD at pax west so again here we see everybody i just talked about we can see the old live streams uh so there is a couple of other panels here uh streaming your DD game from basement to broadcast streaming tabletop games um i'll talk about critical role maze arcana if you ever wanted to stream your game, learn how industry veterans Chris Perkin, uh, Satine Phoenix, Rudy Rutenberg, Chris Lindsay, and Bill Benham all talk about how to do that. Uh, and ask the Waffle Crew anything. So it's an AWA with the folks at the Waffle Crew. So it looks like it is going to be Chris, uh, Anna, Holly, Jared, and Nathan. So they all are going to be there um, as well. So that's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to move myself back over here. The most important thing you can do, this is like, you might even miss it, because like, this is the article. There's nothing here, it's just this one sentence, two sentences. And you need to make sure you see this survey link. You need to do this if you play D&D. Because it is literally you getting your chance to affect the future of Dungeons & Dragons as we know it. We saw this all the time, every week they had a survey about all of the various classes and anything they do on Arth Arcana to get your guys feedback so they can use that to further develop what comes out in physical publications and what they focus on. So I have it right here. I already took the survey, but I'm going to show you guys some of the stuff that's here. What are your favorite classes? Choose up to three. What are your favorite campaign settings? So we'll just grab a couple here. Um, and what are your favorite campaign settings? So again, if you hate the Forgotten Realms, but you love Eberron and you love Spelljammer, and you love Ravenloft, you can check those. That way people know what, you look, what you're looking for. We'll move on. Then it says, which of the editions have you played? Choose any of the editions. Which of the following games do you plan to play in the next, you know, however many months? So then if you check, it'll add other options. Uh, how did you, when's the first time you played D&D? And there are years listed here. Uh, how did you get into tabletop games? What was the way that brought you in? Um, I had a friend or family. When's the last time you participated in an active tabletop game? How many different tabletop games are you currently in? Um, how many people are involved in each of those games? I don't know. So we said three, so it's five. Uh, one DM, five. One DM, six. One DM. Which of the following editions do you plan to play in the next six months? I actually do plan to play a 3-5 game, so we're going to put that in there. Uh, which of the following digital games have you played? Um, I haven't really played too many of these. I have played Neverwinter. I have played Neverwinter Nights. So on, you get the point. Which of the following do you currently play? Uh, do you plan to play any of these in the next six months? How likely would you be able to rec would you recommend these to somebody else? Which of the personal products do you own? And then for me, this is this. Check, 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 check. <laughs> uh, which do you plan to buy in the next six months? Well, I'm going to be buying this, 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 and this. And then we've got here. Um, Digital assets. Have you ever bought any? Do you plan to buy any? Um, I have bought stuff for Fantasy Grounds, and I don't really plan to buy anything for D&D Beyond or Roll20. Um, what merchandise would you be likely to buy? Or would you be interested in? Now, this, again, is big. So, okay, some stuff is fairly standard. Branded apparel, t-shirts, hats, 
uh, storage solutions, which is cool, official stuff, book bags, backpacks, etc. New animated D&D movies, new live action D&D movies, new animated D&D TV series, new live action D&D TV series, mobile games, PC games, console games. And then indicate your level of interest in 5th edition material for each of the following settings. Again, ones we haven't had already. And then uh, please indicate your level of interest in new 5th edition material in the following situations. Feudal Japan. So this is your Oriental Adventure situations, Ancient Rome, Greece, Dark Fairy Tales, Arthurian High Fantasy, and I think the next one is just like anything else, and that's it. But again, guys, go through and answer these truthfully. This stuff can impact what kind of modules and things. And again, this stuff, animated series, TV shows, movies, um, pretty cool if any of that ends up happening, especially now, because again, the other D&D movie was garbage the the theatrical one the sci-fi original one wrath of the dragon god wasn't that bad um it was a sci-fi original though so it has its kind of stigma about it but new D, &D stuff is never a bad idea so go ahead and fill this out like i said i already did this so i'm not going to do it again but uh you get the point so anyway guys that's pretty much it um so again, you'll see above me my It Builds character series. I do this every Wednesday where I build uh, characters or character concepts that you guys suggest. This past week, I built Darth Vader. Uh, and then you'll also see Continuum number one. This is a brand new campaign that I started right here behind me at this table. Me back in the DM seat. Before we start our new campaign, it's in a homebrew world of my entire uh, design and creation. Um, you know loosely based on um, you know everything is homebrew in that world other than a couple of things like mechanics and gods but uh it is a homebrew situation um we are going to finish the campaign that we ended over a year ago with the tpk so they are going through and playing this forgotten realms based campaign as uh, beloved npcs from that campaign they are now helming those npcs to again hopefully try and complete the story so anyway guys you can always click right over there to subscribe as well so you don't miss out on anything and be on the lookout for some cool stuff coming soon some videos with some friends of mine that i think you're really gonna like and potentially another new stream of a different campaign so anyway guys hope you enjoyed all this i'll see you next time